Hello and welcome to the today's daily prelims practice session. Today we will be discussing certain MCQs based on the important and relevant news items which have appeared in today's The Hindu Daily edition as well as Indian Express. The topics which we are going to discuss have been displayed on your screen and their time stamping has been provided in the description box below. So now let us begin our session. So our first question is from the context of the recent climate change conference COP27 which was held in Egypt in the town of Sharm El Sheikh. We all know that there were several announcements as well as positive outcomes which were there in the COP27 for example the agreement on loss and damage funding. But still there were several unanswered questions or unanswered issues as well. For example, the main issue was related to the climate finance and the responsibility of the $100 billion funding per year by the developed countries to the developing world. So such type of multilateral meetings are important from the UPSC prelims examination. For example, if we go by the previous year question in 2016, the question was asked related to the Paris summit and there were three statements given in the context of the Paris summit 2015 and you were asked to find the correct answer. So give yourself a try and attempt to this particular question. Now we shall come towards the DPP question number one for today's session. The question asks, with reference to the recently concluded Sharm El Sheikh climate change conference COP27, you have to consider the following statements. And out of these three statements, you have to find the correct ones. Statement one says, India has launched a mission life at the conference to protect and preserve the environment. This statement is incorrect because this mission was not launched at COP27. So that means option A and option D are eliminated. Option 2 is common. Let us see the third statement. AWARE is an initiative which was launched at COP27 to address the water related challenges and solutions across the climate change adaptation. Yes, this statement is factually correct and that is why option C, 2 and 3 are the correct answers. So by now you must have guessed the answers for this question also. And here the third statement is incorrect and that is why you eliminate all the options having 3 and option B is the correct answer. Let us move towards our DPP question number 2. The topic of this question is MG Narega. This topic has appeared in today's The Hindu Delhi edition at page number 1 itself. This news has come in the context that recently the central government has constituted a committee to review the implementation of the MG Narega scheme especially to assess the program's efficacy as a poverty alleviation tool. Now if we go by the previous year question paper analysis, we find certain questions which were asked in relation to certain schemes or apps. For example, in 2021, the question was asked related to the ministry, which is the nodal agency to ensure the effective implementation of the scheduled tribes, other traditional forest dwellers act 2006. Again, try to attempt this particular question. Coming to today's question. Out of these three statements in the context of MG Narega Act 2005, you have to find the incorrect ones. The statement one says, Ministry of the Panchayati Raj acts as a nodal ministry for this scheme. This statement is factually incorrect because it is the rural development ministry. Second statement is 50% of the unskilled labor cost and material cost of the program is borne by the center. Again, this statement is also incorrect because these percentages are different for the unskilled labor as well as material cost. For the unskilled labor, it is 100%. And for the material cost, it is 75%. So that is why this statement is also incorrect. And statement 3 says, as per the act, plans and decisions regarding the nature and choice of the works should be made in open assemblies of the Gram Sabha. This is a correct statement. But because you have to find the incorrect statements, so 1 and 2 are the incorrect and hence option A, 1 and 2 only are the correct answers. Now many of you might have ticked this question incorrectly because it might happen that in order to attempt any question in a hurry, we tend to mark the correct choices and somehow we miss this incorrect word. So be very careful while reading what the question is exactly asking from you. Coming back to the previous year question, so the right answer for this question is option D. 
Coming to DPP question number three. The question is in relation to the appointment of the judges. We all know that there exists a collegian system which was devised as a machinery outside the constitutional provisions, but it was designed in order to ensure the independence of the judicial appointments. Now, this particular theme that is judicial appointments is one of the favorite areas of the UPSC prelims examination. For example, in 2019, the question was asked in relation to the judges of the Supreme Court of India. So this was the question. You can read this question, give yourself enough time, think about it and guess the right answer. We will discuss today's question number three, which is in relation to the judges of high courts as well as Supreme Courts. There are two statements and you have to find the correct statement. Statement one says, according to the memorandum of procedure, recommendations of the Chief Justice of India and the concerned state government is obtained prior to the appointment of the Chief Justice of the High Court. This statement is correct. However, an important fact is that this memorandum of procedure is not defined within the constitution. The statement too says that Union Minister of Law, Justice and Company Affairs seek recommendations of the outgoing Chief Justice of India for the appointment of the next CJI based on the principle of seniority. This statement is also correct and hence both 1 and 2 are the correct answers. Now there is an important term in this question that is the principle of seniority. Now we must understand that when it comes to the High Court or Supreme Court judges, who is senior? What is seniority? Is it on the basis of work experience or is it on the basis of age? So seniority of the judges of Supreme Court is defined as the period which starts from the date of appointment as a judge of the Supreme Court. So the person who has served maximum time in the Supreme Court by being as a judge of that very court, he will be considered as the most senior person despite the age factor. Now this is very important. Second important fact related to this is that the person who is made CGI that is Chief Justice of India must be the person who is the senior most judge of the Supreme Court. However, this is not a mandatory provision by the constitution and that is why there have been instances in our history whereby this principle has been defied. Now moving towards our fourth question of today's DPP which is in the context of the election commission. This is a very good article which has appeared in today's Indian Express newspaper and is written by our ex Chief Election Commissioner S.Y. Qureshi. Again, the constitutional bodies, for example, election commissions are very important when it comes to the prelims examination. For example, in 2017, the question was asked from the election commission itself. There were three statements given and you were asked to find the correct statement. Coming to today's question, there are again three statements and you have to find the correct one. Statement one says the secretariat of the commission has an independent budget which is finalized directly in consultation between the election commission and the union ministry of finance. So you will be getting some new informations as well. This statement is correct. Statement 2 says chief election commissioner and other election commissioners are appointed by the president based on the advice of the union government. Yes, again this statement is also correct. Yes despite the fact that election commission is a constitutional body, still the consultation or the advice of the union government is also taken. Statement 3 says, the chief election commissioner along with the other election commissioners can be removed from the office only through the impeachment of parliament. This statement is incorrect because we all know that the removal procedure of the other election commissioners there the role of the consultation of the chief election commissioner is very important and it is not through the impeachment of the parliament. Therefore, this option 3 is incorrect and if you eliminate option 3 and you select 1 and 2, obviously option A is the correct answer. If we come back to the previous year question, so here obviously option 1 is incorrect and as far as the answer is concerned, option D that is 3 only is the correct answer. Our next question is from the economy section. The editorial has come in the Indian Express newspaper. 
and it reads inflation versus growth. So this news has come in the context that India's macroeconomic situation continues to present a tricky challenge to the policymakers. And we all are aware about the complexities involved to design the monetary policies in order to balance the rate of inflation as well as growth. Again, inflation, CPI, WPI, or are the conceptual things, the basic things from the economy section. And that is why one of the favorite areas of UPSC as well. In 2020, the question was asked in relation to the consumer price index as well as the wholesale price index. Out of the three statements, you were asked to find the correct statement. Give yourself a try and try to assess that how much do you know about the basics of economy. Coming to today's question, there are two statements. Statement 1 says that core inflation refers to the change in the value of all the goods in the basket. Statement 2 says headline inflation removes the consumer price index components that can exhibit a large amount of volatility from month to month. Both these statements are interchange and that is why both the statements are incorrect. The reason being the core inflation excludes the volatile items for example food as well as fuel and headline inflation takes all the goods in the basket and that is why option D neither 1 nor 2 is the correct answer. Now coming back to the previous year question, the answer to this question is option A that is 1 and 2 only. Now we shall move towards our last question, question number 6. This is in relation to the Kundan Coulomb nuclear power plant in India. The news has come in the context that recently the Russian state-owned nuclear energy corporation has offered more advanced fuel option in India's largest nuclear power station at Kundam Kulam. If you go by the previous year questions, the nuclear power sector or the ecosystem associated with nuclear energy is very important. For example, in 2020, the question was asked in the context of IAEA safeguards. Try to attempt this question. However, today's question is related to the location of various nuclear power plants in India. You have to find that out of all these pairs, how many pairs are correctly matched? Kundan Kulam Tamil Nadu, Jaitapur Maharashtra, Rawat Bhata Rajasthan, Kakrapara Gujarat. So the correct answer is that all the pairs are correctly matched. That is by option D, all the pairs is the correct answer. If we have to talk about the previous year question, then here option B that is some used imported uranium and the others used domestic supply is the correct answer. 